Hey everybody, Joe Price here. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing Tracktronics. Tracktronics is basically using minecart tracks to uh, generate some uh, pretty uh, complex uh, machinery, some pretty complex uh, contraptions. So in previous videos, I showcased a number of Hoytronics builds, including a uh, working computer that can uh, perform various arithmetic functions. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do the exact same thing using minecart tracks only. So uh, minecart tracks, um, they have some advantages. One is that you're not dependent on using any uh, NPCs. Um, it's just the uh, player character that gets um, carted around um, while the uh, computer is uh, functioning. So that means that you can actually uh, build these uh, machines to be fairly large, fairly elaborate and not worry about uh, NPCs uh, disappearing on you, uh, being teleported, so on and so forth. So first things first, let's uh, showcase how this uh, computer works with uh, tracks. We're gonna show the uh, four arithmetic uh, functions, and then afterwards, we'll have a quick discussion uh, on uh, how exactly this uh, operates. And you'll see that uh, this is completely analogous to um, Hoektronics and um, the uh, setup for the uh, computer using electronics is actually nearly identical to the setup here using tracks. All right, so um, uh, just a quick uh, refresher as to how the uh, computer functions here. The three registers, so we have the accumulator register that accumulates um, um, uh, numerical information here, uh, and it's... Uh, uh, it's the uh, register that actually uh, displays the answer for f uh, three out of the four uh, ma uh, arithmetic operations. The memory register and the uh, MQ register are also used um, in um, the various arithmetic uh, processes. So let's take a look at um, multiplication first. So let's suppose I want to do uh, 70 times 3. So I'll just input 70 into memory. I'll input three into the MQ register. And um, in a moment, I'll pull the uh, M lever, multiplication lever, and the answer will pop up into the accumulator uh, register. So that's 70 times three, so I should get 210 in the accumulator register. All right, so uh, to get this thing to work, I have to actually hop onto the uh, tracks because I'm gonna get teleported in a second. And when I pull the uh, M lever, I'm going to be um, um, carted through uh, a variety of uh, uh, rails here, and so let's see, let's see what happens. All right, so if we come check um, over here, we'll see that the answer is indeed 210. If you do 16 plus 64, that gives you 80. 2 plus 128 gives you 130. So 80 plus uh, 130 gives you 210. So 210, exactly the answer um, uh, that we should have gotten for the multiplication 70 times three. Okay, we also have a clear function here. So if I hop onto this little rail, uh, pull this lever, all the registers get uh, reset. Okay, let's try another uh, operation. This time, uh, let's try division. So for division, we now have to enter uh, numbers into the accumulator and memory registers. And the answer this time around will pop up in the MQ register. So for instance, let's say we wanna do 40 uh, divided by, uh, let's say divided by 10. Okay, so we should end up uh, getting an answer of uh, four in the MQ register. So let's take a look. And I'll pull the uh, uh, division uh, lever. And yeah, let's see this in action. There we have it. So four is indeed the correct answer to that uh, division problem. Okay, let's clear again. Now let's try another um, 
another calculation. This time, let's try addition. So for addition, we have to input one number into the accumulator, one number into the uh, memory register, and the final answer will be in the accumulator register. So for instance, let's try 40 uh, plus, uh, let's say um, 60. So we've got 40 plus 60. So we should end up with 100 in the accumulator register. Okay, so I'll hop on my rails again, and this time I'll pull the A lever that stands for addition. Let's take a look. All right, so there we have it. And up here, we see 32 plus 64, 96 plus four, that's 100. 100 is indeed the uh, correct answer to our addition problem. All right, so let's clear again. All right, let's do one more mathematical operation. Let's do subtraction. So for subtraction, once again, I have to put in one number into the accumulator register, one number into the memory register. And if we want to have a, um, an outcome that's a positive integer, we have to place the uh, larger value into uh, memory. So let's say we do 64 minus four. Okay, so we should get uh, 60 as the outcome and 60 will appear in the accumulator register. All right, let's take a look. So I'll hop on the rails and this time I'll pull the S lever, S stands for subtraction. Let's take a look. Bingo. And we take a look over here, eight plus 32 is 40, four plus 16 is 20, 20 plus 40 is uh, 60. 60 is indeed the correct answer to our subtraction problem. All right, let's clear one more time. Okay, so just a brief explanation as to what is going on here. And uh, this is something I uh, mentioned um, a couple of videos ago when I was uh, showcasing this computer using Hoytronics. So basically, uh, you have these three uh, registers, you input a value into the uh, memory register, and that will always get transferred to the accumulator register. And the MQ register dictates exactly how many times the contents of memory will get uh, transferred. So um, when it comes to multiplication, we input some number into memory, we input some number into the MQ register, and um, it effectively does that multiplication. So when I do 70 into memory, and then three into the MQ register, I end up adding 73 times to the accumulator, uh, thus uh, performing the uh, multiplication. Uh, for addition, I input a number into memory, input a number into accumulator, and the MQ register, um, when the uh, lever is pulled, it'll actually um, turn on the one, meaning the contents of memory will get added one time to the uh, uh, contents of the accumulator, thus effectively doing the addition. So division and subtraction are a little bit more complicated, the logic behind those. And uh, again, I explained that already, um, uh, how those two mathematical operations uh, function a couple of videos ago. So I won't be going into that again. Suffice it to say, um, the logic is the same. The MQ register dictates how many times um, the contents from memory get transferred into the accumulated register. Um, one last thing that I wanted to quickly mention here, when I hop on these uh, rails, I have to get accelerated first before I actually enter the, um, uh, the rail systems uh, directly below me. So uh, up, um, up top here to the right are the accelerator systems. So when I pull these uh, levers, I get um, uh, teleported into one of these two uh, tracks those um, accelerator um, uh, rails accelerate me, and then I maintain that momentum as I uh, go through uh, all of the uh, rails below. So um, let me take the opportunity now to explain how this, um, this entire thing uh, was uh, conceived, because this uh, seems quite a jump from the electronics builds that I uh, showcased that previously to now all of a sudden using rail systems to accomplish pretty much the uh, same thing. So let's come over here. And first, let me just uh, explain one quick thing regarding logic gates in uh, Terraria. So what previously, I uh, showcased a number of builds 
using the first two uh, logic gates uh, when it comes to Hoytronics. So in the first example, um, I had um, I or uh, I have here uh, two um, Hoyk tracks that are at 90 degrees with respect to one another, and there's a Hoyk tooth uh, right in the middle of the uh, two uh, intersecting uh, tracks, and the actuation state of that Hoyk tooth determines whether or not the uh, skeleton is going to move upwards or if it's going to go straight across. For instance, right now the uh, tooth at the uh, center here is actuated meaning the skeleton, when it reaches that particular junction point, will be hoiked upwards. And yeah, let's demonstrate that. Yeah, skeleton keeps getting hoiked up. However, if I deactuate that particular hoik tooth, now all of a sudden I change paths for the skeleton. The skeleton is gonna go straight through and it'll end up activating this pressure plate. So I'll uh, turn lights on and off as the skeleton passes through that pressure plate. So. This is one example of a logic gate where there's an incoming input. When I pull this uh, uh, right lever and I change the actuation state of that um, uh, Hoyt tooth. And um, this way I can uh, alter what sort of signal I'm going to uh, generate as my output. Another way of doing this is through the single track mechanism. And I've shown this uh, before where um, a pair of uh, Hoyt teeth a top hoik tooth and a bottom hoik tooth control whether or not a pressure plate downstream is going to get activated. So for instance, in the current state, when the skeleton passes through, that top hoik tooth will elevate the skeleton slightly so it passes over that uh, pressure plate, doesn't touch it, doesn't activate it. We'll demonstrate that here. Yeah, it goes straight through, no activation of that pressure plate. But if I toggle these uh, hoik teeth, now all of a sudden, the skeleton will stay to the ground as it passes through this bottom hoik tooth and will actually activate this um, pressure plate. Yeah, so we see that there. Yeah, so this is the other way of doing things. Instead of relying on two tracks, we just have one track and we have the uh, pair of hoik teeth that can be uh, toggled in this uh, manner. Um, typically, this approach is superior to the approach uh, illustrated above because it's um, uh, more compressed and uh, we don't have to worry about the skeleton uh, uh, going off down some different path. If the skeleton needs to do a number of things going down one particular track, we're not wasting time having to teleport, teleport the skeleton right back to the track when it takes some alternate uh, hoik track path. All right, so fundamentally, these are the two types of uh, logic gates that can be achieved, either two track or one track approaches. So with, um, with rails, there's something that's uh, very similar here. Uh, instead of having hoik teeth that dictate the path the skeleton will take, we have um, uh, track changers that can dictate which uh, way the, um, um, the actual cart is going to move. So you can see here right uh, at this junction point, uh, that's an interchange and that can be a change through the pull of a lever. We check the wiring here. It's just a very simple uh, setup, a wire um, uh, going to that particular junction point. And if you notice, when I pull the lever, the track uh, changes here. Uh, in this current state, when I uh, teleport into this teleport onto these tracks, I'll be taking the down path. If, however, I pull the lever, I'll be taking the top path instead. You can see that the down path, or the bottom path, there's a pressure plate there that will be activated and hooked up to these uh, torches. So this way, um, based on an input signal, I can dictate which path is gonna be taken and which uh, pressure plate is gonna be activated. Okay, so here I have to actually hop on the uh, rails and now let's take a look. So right now it's set to the bottom uh, path. Yeah, so there we go. Keep taking the bottom path. Now I pull this lever, change the track. Now I'll just go straight across and I won't be activating that particular pressure plate anymore. So there we have it. We see that uh, this particular setup with the um, alternating paths here uh, based on uh, uh, the track changer that can be uh, changed uh, through an input, it's uh, completely analogous to the uh, Hoektronics um, uh, setup directly above, where once again, the skeleton goes down one particular track, but is either gonna be elevated slightly or is gonna be pushed against the ground and either will um, hit that pressure plate or won't hit that pressure plate, uh, depending on the uh, input uh, signal. So this means that 
whatever we can engineer using these particular uh, logic gates in Hoytronics, we should absolutely be able to engineer the exact same things using um, uh, rails instead. Now, we saw that that is definitely possible as far as the computer is concerned that I just showcased, but um, I still want to take a look at how we can accomplish things using this Hoytronic setup with a one track. Because when I showcased the computer previously, I used almost exclusively the um, a two track system. So let's take a very quick look at uh, the uh, three registers that are involved in the computer and uh, take a look at the difference among all three of these uh, approaches that can be used for these, uh, for these registers, starting with the accumulator first. So I mentioned previously that the accumulator register is nothing more than a binary counter. And um, it uses, um, uh, uh, or it's based on the actuation state of um, Hoyt teeth at particular junctions. So let's take a quick uh, look at how this uh, binary counter actually functions. So when I pull the lever, the skeleton takes the uh, top path deactuates that particular hoik tooth, which means the next skeleton that's going to be summoned here will pass straight through, will be hoiked up here, turning on the signal at the tooth position, and there's a pressure plate along the way that'll be tripped, and that feeds back onto the uh, one position, and I'll turn that off. And so then we get two, then three, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. Okay, so again, just a very basic um, binary counter. Yeah, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take a look at how this can be accomplished using a single track approach. So much more efficient since the skeleton will have the opportunity to go straight through every time. Now just um, take a quick look at the uh, wiring here. Um, so this time around, these uh, uh, levers and these uh, torches are connected to a pair of uh, hoik teeth which once again will dictate whether or not the skeleton will uh, end up activating that particular uh, pressure plate. So there's a teleporter directly underneath. And if we take a look, all of these teleporters are connected to uh, this kill chamber over here. So let's take a look at what happens when uh, I start summoning skeletons. All right, so the first one tripped this particular pressure plate, got teleported into the kill chamber, and um, we turned on uh, the uh, torches at the one position. We also toggle this pair of hoik teeth, which means the next skeleton that passes through will not no longer uh, activate that particular pressure plate, which will continue straight through and activate this next pressure plate. So it'll be teleported away from this particular teleporter into the kill chamber. But along the way, the, tele the um, um, skeleton will activate this particular pressure plate, so that will toggle this pair of hoik teeth again. Okay, so we've got ourselves another form of uh, binary counter. Yeah. So that means that computer that I showcased uh, before that used the um, uh, two track system, we could easily replace that with a one track system. And uh, it'll be uh, a little bit uh, faster, a little bit more compressed as a result. So um, because rails are completely analogous to uh, the one track uh, system, or at least we can set it up to be completely analogous. That means we can devise a very simple um, accumulator, a very simple binary counter using uh, rails. All right, so same kind of logic. Um, when I'm gonna get uh, teleported from my starting position, I'll get teleported to the accelerator or, uh, accelerator over here, and I'll um, enter this uh, first uh, junction point and I'll be taking the path down. I'll enter that uh, teleporter, and that teleporter, well, it'll teleport me uh, right over here um, and turn on the uh, torches at the uh, one position. Yeah, so let's take a look. Yeah, so there we go. Turn on the uh, torches at the one position. And notice that um, the uh, track changer just affected that particular junction point. So the next time I get uh, summoned into the accelerator here, I'll end up going straight through. Now there's another pressure plate in the um, top track. So when I trip that, it'll turn off the lights at the one position and I'll proceed further on. I'll go through the uh, bottom path at the uh, second position 
and again, I'll get teleported away, and I'll turn on the uh, torches at the second position. All right, so there we go. And I'll just keep going like that. Okay, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. Yeah, so I've got myself a binary counter once again. Once again, completely analogous, analogous to uh, what was achieved with uh, Quaketronics. All right, so that was the accumulator register. And uh, the next register, the uh, NQ register, it's a reverse binary counter. So instead of counting up, it counts down. Okay, so let's take a look. I demonstrated this before, so I'll keep this uh, quick. Let's say I start with three. Actually, let's say I start with seven. Okay, so every pull of lever, I'll start counting down from seven. So next, we got six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So with a single track, you can do the exact same thing here. And let's say I start with seven. I go to six, five, four, three, yeah, so on and so forth. All right, so uh, to do a reverse binary counter, I just reverse the polarity of every single one of these uh, Hoyt teeth that have actuators on them. And thus I can count uh, backwards. Yeah, so that means I can do the exact same thing with rails. I'll just reverse the polarity of every single junction point. And uh, again, I'll have an opportunity to count backwards. Once again, I'll try seven here. Hop on the track. Okay, now I got six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right. So once again, the um, uh, the two registers, the accumulator and NQ registers, not a problem as far as um, um, creating those two registers with just rails. The final register, the memory register, is where things get a little bit tricky. Okay, so first, just a reminder of how this was accomplished with um, uh, two tracks at 90 degrees to one another. And just a reminder that this memory register isn't actually hooked up to anything. So um, uh, there's no opportunity to actually transfer any of this information. Uh, so all we're gonna be demonstrating is uh, the distribution uh, system. So the whole idea is uh, whatever number is stored in uh, memory, it opens up a uh, ceiling here. And when the uh, skeleton gets uh, summoned, it ends up getting hoiked all the way through and so what's past this uh, ceiling will be the accumulator register. So the contents at the one position would be transferred to the one position in the accumulator if the ceiling is open. If the ceiling is closed, if there is no input at the one position, then the skeleton will simply get teleported into this teleporter, just get hoiked to the left here. And um, uh, here the teleporters are uh, hooked up to the next teleporter in sequence which means that this skeleton ends up visiting every unit of memory here before ending up in the uh, kill chamber. Yeah, let's take a look uh, at uh, what happens. I can't turn any of these on because if I open up the ceilings, the skeletons will end up escaping. So let's just demonstrate the distribution system here. Yeah, so there we go. Um, now, uh, if we want to accomplish this with uh, just the single track system, well, things get a little bit tricky for the following reasons. So over here, we have, again, a um, pair of uh, Hoyt teeth that will dictate whether or not a skeleton will trip a particular uh, pressure plate. And if we uh, take a look at the uh, wiring, so all of these uh, teleporters are hooked up to the starting uh, teleporter this time. And um, this is how things are gonna go. So let's say I have uh, a signal input at the one position. Okay, so I toggle this uh, pair of Hoyt teeth, which means this pressure plate is gonna get to activate it. Okay, so the skeleton will come through here, uh, will get teleported to the beginning, and it'll toggle this uh, pair of uh, Hoyt teeth. Okay, we need to toggle this pair of Hoyt teeth because if the skeleton is gonna come at the beginning, we can't let it trip that um, uh, uh, pressure plate anymore. We have to make sure that it goes all the way through to the next one, because that's the whole point of the distributor that the uh, skeleton will visit every one of these uh, positions in a sequence, transferring the contents of uh, memory to the accumulator register. So that means whichever pair of Hoyt teeth are uh, in the on state, 
so that the pressure plates get activated, they have to be flipped back to the off state. Now, this presents a fundamental problem, and that is we, uh, when it comes to the uh, number stored in memory, we can't just wipe out that number that's stored there, because if we want to repeat the transfer of the information from memory multiple times, well, we need to make sure that we retain that information in memory throughout. All right, so the way that this can be accomplished is through a parallel track, which will serve as backup memory. Okay, so just to illustrate that here, when I uh, store information, let's say in the one position, not only do I toggle this pair of white teeth, but I also toggle the pair of white teeth directly below. So that means that after the skeleton has done its business going all the way through here and all of these white teeth get reset, the parallel track, nothing gets reset there. Which means that um, after the skeleton cycles through the distributor, if another skeleton gets sent through the bottom track, it essentially uses that backup memory to transfer that uh, information to the uh, original track, to the original uh, memory register. So uh, one way to accomplish that is the skeleton that ultimately cycles through here and makes it all the way to the end, we can send it into the uh, parallel track. Um, however, that slows things down a little bit. So it's a little bit faster if there's a separate skeleton to do that business. Okay, so this is how it's done. We actually summon a skeleton over here. So when I summon another skeleton to go through the distributor, eventually it'll end up passing all the way through and it hit this uh, pressure plate that's connected through blue wire to the pair of teleporters in the bottom track. What that'll do is it'll teleport this uh, other skeleton right at the start of that track and causes it, it'll cause it to pass straight through, transferring the contents of backup memory into the original memory register. Yeah, so let's take a look. So let's say um, I have uh, 13 stored in my uh, memory register. So that means uh, the skeleton that I'm gonna summon, it'll enter this teleporter, get teleported to the beginning, then enter the next teleporter, uh, corresponding to the fourth position, get teleported to the beginning, and then go and be teleported at this position, at the eighth position, get teleported back to the beginning, and then pass all the way through. It'll go to hit this teleporter, go into that death chamber here, and uh, when it passes over this pressure plate, it'll get this uh, skeleton that's already here to go through the uh, bottom uh, track. Yeah, let's demonstrate that. Perfect, so as you saw, right at the end, that skeleton bottom uh, went all the way through, and it reset. Uh, the um, Hoik teeth to what they were initially when we input uh, 13 into uh, memory. Let's uh, try that again. Let's say we input um, uh, 24. Yeah, so there we go. Again, the backup memory reset the memory register uh, for us. All right, so if this can be done using single rail systems, creating the uh, memory register this way along with the distributor, then we can definitely do this with rails as well. All right, so let's demonstrate that here. So uh, similar logic, we have the uh, backup uh, memory right at the uh, very bottom. So um, if I hit, let's say, uh, these three, so I input 14 now, I've just changed the actuation state, uh, or uh, not actuation state, I've changed the uh, um, the junction point at all of these uh, uh, junctions. So now I'm going to end up, when I pass through, I'm gonna end up moving down here and I'll be teleported away at this particular uh, teleporter. And here through the blue wire, we have a feedback system onto that junction point. So it'll uh, change that uh, junction position. So the next time around, I'll go straight through, so on and so forth. So this way, this is completely analogous to what we just demonstrated with the uh, Hoyt tracks. Yeah, so let's see this in action. There we go. So you saw me moving through the bottom uh, backup uh, memory right at the very end there, transferring the contents once again from backup memory to my um, um, original memory register. And you saw me, when I pass through the original memory register, you saw me teleport three times since I have uh, three numbers lit up here. Let's do another example. Let's say I've got 16 and four. So you'll see me teleport twice before I finally teleport into the bottom backup memory track. There we go. 
Okay, so there you have it. We can create accumulate registers, MQ registers, and memory registers using Rails only. Um, and this is completely analogous to the single track mechanisms uh, when it comes to uh, electronics. So as I mentioned before, the upside here of using Rails is that we don't have to rely on any NPCs, which means no worrying about um, uh, NPCs teleporting on you, disappearing on you, because skeletons will disappear if they go off screen eventually. And that means that we can create gigantic uh, contraptions using uh, Rails. The uh, two downsides though of using uh, Rails, number one is they're a little bit slower than using um, Hoik tracks. And uh, number two, uh, they're quite uh, seizure inducing. Um, you know, if you're prone to developing seizures due to flashing lights, that can be a bit of an uh, issue. In fact, it was a bit of a pain to uh, even create the, uh, the computer here because of the constant uh, flashing lights as I was uh, um, tracking through the entire system. So in any event, um, uh, this gives you some other options if, uh, if you're interested in building uh, fairly complex uh, contraptions. Now you can either use uh, Hoik systems or you can give uh, Rails a try as well. So as always, I'll make this uh, entire world available for uh, download. This is just the uh, tutorial world that has a wide variety of uh, contraptions to uh, play around with. And um, um, I'll give you an opportunity to see the uh, computer in all the different uh, forms, including the, uh, uh, the rail-based uh, uh, computer as well. All right, guys. So. Um, um, uh, that's it for now. I might be doing a bit more work using um, uh, Tractronics uh, in the future, but uh, for the time being, I'm still going to do quite a bit of work on Hoytronics uh, systems as well. All right, so uh, we'll see you next time.